Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust that you're feeling bright and blessed this morning, that your journey this day has begun in the Spirit of the Lord. Your mind is upon Jesus and his kingdom. And you are ready to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is October the 29th in the year of our Lord, 2017. And this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our look into the life of Job through the book of Job. And today we are continuing with the speech from Elihu, the youngest of Job's three slash four friends. And Elihu pretty much sums up what he has to say in the course of these three or four chapters. So let's begin by looking at chapter 34, and let's look at verses 1 through 7. Furthermore, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that have knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the mouth tasteth meat. Now that's very important. The ear trieth words, as the mouth taste meat. And so what Elihu is stating here is that we don't take everything into our hearts that we hear, but we try the words that we hear. And the way that we try them is we test them to the word of God. Do they stand true? Are they whole? Are they sound? Are they pure? Do they complement the word of God or do they conflict with the word of God? He continues in verse 4, he says, Let us choose judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job has said, I am righteous, and God has taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. What man is like Job? Who drinketh up scorning like water? So he's quoting what Job has said here. And so again, the emphasis of this part of Elihu's speech is on verse 3 and 4. The ear tries words as the mouth tasteth meat. So therefore, because we're trying what we hear, we're testing what we hear, let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. Now, as I've pointed out before, we have the benefit of testing to the written word of God. Job and his three friends didn't have this friend's. So feel very blessed that you hold a Bible in your hands this morning. Elihu says in verse 21, the reason that we do this, the reason that we test the things that we hear, whether they are of God or not, is because his eyes are upon the ways of men and he sees all his goings. There's nothing hid from the Almighty. He sees everything at all times. And so if we're going to govern our lives correctly, properly, we have to do so by following, listening to, and obeying the word of God. Backing up to verse 10, Elihu continues his plea with these wise men. He says, therefore, hearken unto me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. Even though the Lord has allowed these sufferings in the lives of men, they don't necessarily come from his hand, but from the hand of our enemy. Yet God takes them and uses them for his glory. And it is our duty as his followers to remain faithful unto him through these greatest times of suffering. He continues in verse 34. He says, let men of understanding tell me and let a wise man hearken unto me. In chapter 35, verse 4, he says, I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. In chapter 36, beginning at verse 2, he says, Suffer me a little, and I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar, and I will ascribe righteousness to my Maker. For truly my words shall not be false. He that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, God is mighty, and he despises not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom." And so what Elihu is saying here is even though I am young in age, you should listen to what I have to say because God can use even me. But he says in verse 13, the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath unto themselves. They cry not when he bindeth them. 
They don't see their suffering having come from God so that they may learn a lesson. And so even when they're bound in these afflictions, they do not cry unto the Lord, who is their only help in time of need. He says in verse 22, Behold, God exalts by his power. Who teaches like him? Oh, friends, isn't that so true? When the Lord wants to get our attention, he knows exactly how to do it. And as stubborn as we may be, as hard-headed many of us are, the Almighty knows how to bring us to a low point in our lives so we'll look unto him and cry out to him for our salvation. He says in verse 26, Behold, God is great, and we know him not. Neither can the number of his years be searched out. In other words, God's ways are far beyond our ways. And no matter how hard we try to figure out what it is he's doing, because what much of what he is doing will not be seen for maybe months, years to come. No matter how hard we try, we cannot comprehend the ways or the things of God. Elihu says in chapter 37, beginning at verse 1, As this also my heart trembleth, and is moved out of his place. As I begin to comprehend the ways of God, my heart trembles before him. Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goes out of his mouth. Verse 5, God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. And in the following verses, Elihu explains how God uses tragic circumstances mainly those of catastrophic weather-related events to get our attention. He says in verse 13, God causes these things to come. He causes these tragedies to come. Floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis. He causes them to come for three reasons. Either for correction, he's trying to correct us. For his land, the earth needs the moisture that is provided by these blizzards, by these hurricanes, by these tsunamis. Or it is for his judgment upon the earth for its sinful practices and its sinful ways. He says, having knowing this and understanding this, hearken unto this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. What wonderful advice, friends. Just stand still and see the works of God around you. Turn off Facebook. Turn off social media. Turn off your cell phone. Turn off TV. Walk outside in the yard and just soak in the splendor of God that is happening all around you. And he finishes his speech in verse 23 saying, Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power. We are weak. He is excellent in judgment. We are prejudiced and prone to show favor in times of judgment. He is excellent in plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him, and he respects not any that are wise of heart. You see, this wasn't an easy speech for Elihu to make. If you back up to chapter 33, he says, Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches, and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue has spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God has made me. And the breath of the Almighty has given me life. He says in verse 7, Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. So even though my words are firm and coarse, I'm not trying to beat you down. I'm trying to give you wisdom that you've yet to be given. And so he's just encouraging Job to be still, as we learned in chapter 37, verse 14. Be still, Job and consider the wondrous works of God. And friends, that's what I leave you with today. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what is to come in the days of head, when you face the most trying of times, be still and consider the wondrous works of God. You and millions of others are suffering, and maybe the load seems too heavy to bear. But God is on the throne. He's in control. And if you'll focus on the big picture, as opposed to what's taking place in your tiny piece of the world, you'll lift your hands in praise and adoration with Job. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord brings days of pleasure and the Lord brings days of heartache. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
The Lord exalts us and the Lord brings us low. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord brings judgment and the Lord brings reward. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all things and at all times, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord God most high. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us. Tomorrow, we'll pick up on what the Lord has to say to Job and his three friends. And so until then, I pray that your journey will be blessed. I pray that your heart will be touched, and I pray that your eyes will be open. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.